What's going on, everyone? The NFL trade deadline has passed, and Kareem Hunt is still a Cleveland Brown, so we're going to talk about that, plus some other news and rumors following the Browns' emphatic win against the Bengals on Monday Night Football. But first, we are on the road to 15,000 subscribers. If you have not clicked onto the subscribe button, please go ahead and do so and get locked in for the best Cleveland Browns YouTube coverage. The NFL trade deadline has come and gone, and the Browns made no big moves. They made trades this year, just not today. Remember, their trade was the Deion Jones trade. Amari Cooper, which, by the way, while it's fresh in my brain right now, and I don't forget, Andrew Barry deserves some type of medal or award because he got Amari Cooper for a fifth-round pick, and the Bears just traded a second for Chase Claypool. Contracts are not the same, but wow. Andrew Barry... Highway robbery against the Cowboys. But we're going to jump into the latest news and rumors stemming from Monday night and talk about some trade buzz as well as that's done now. No more trade chatter around Kareem Hunt, for example, here, who had a great Monday night game against the Cincinnati Bengals, in my opinion. And I think it really set himself up to hopefully be on a good track to finish out this season with the Browns as they look to make a playoff push now that they are 3-5 and five entering the bye. In Week 8 against the Bengals, Kareem Hunt had 11 carries. Remember, he had 11 carries the previous two weeks combined. So clearly Kevin Stefanski owned up and said, we are not getting our job done as a coaching staff to get 27 involved, and they gave him the rock 15 times on Monday night. And Kareem Hunt, after the game was pretty open and honest about all the trade rumors. So this is before the NFL trade deadline passed. This is following the Monday night game. Browns, Kareem Hunt, I'm down for whatever. I'm a football player and it's a business. I'm ready to do whatever they decide with me. That's either go somewhere else or hear anything. It don't matter. I love the game of football. To me, that kind of reads as, Maybe half of him was somewhat out the door, right? He's upset that he didn't get that contract extension and the Browns never really honored his trade request he had back in August. At the end, Andrew Barry said, a fourth and he's yours. And it looks like no one was going to offer a fourth round pick for Kareem Hunt. So credit and bravo to Andrew Barry for sticking by his guns, right? Not just trading Kareem Hunt for the sake of trading someone because he's punting on the season. No, he put him at a fourth round pick. No team called and offered it, most likely. And so he said, well, we're not just going to trade him for a bag of footballs because we just want to make a trade, right? We're just bored. No. Good job, Andrew Barry, for holding on to good players for what they're worth, right? That's what I said. Hunt for a fourth, hard to pass on. Hunt for a sixth, that I can pass on. So if you are excited that Kareem Hunt is staying in Cleveland, let's bring back an oldie but a goodie. Keep 27th. Spam his jersey number down in the comment section below. Let him know that the Dog Pound would love to see him finish his career with the Cleveland Browns. Even if he goes somewhere else next year, he's a brownie for life in my eyes. All right, this is what I was talking about just a moment ago. I wonder how much the Browns win against Cincinnati factored into Andrew Barry's trade plan. Because let's say the Browns lost to the Bengals. Is that fourth round asking price for... Kareem Hunt slip to a fifth? Or does Andrew Barry look at this team and go, finally, this is the roster I put together and had a statement win, and I'm ready to keep it intact, right, not break up this locker room, going into the bye three and five, and we'll look at the schedule at the end of the video today and try to make a playoff push and not make a big statement to my fan base and to everyone of, we are sellers, we are punting on this season, we're going to start unloading key assets. We'll talk more about that and Monday night in just a moment. But we have a brand new sponsor here at Chat Sports. I'm really excited to tell you guys about. And that is Established Titles. So you might be curious what I'm talking about right now. Well, Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as layers or lords and ladies in English. Now, when you get started with 
established titles by going to establishedtitles.com slash chat. Well, you can get at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Scotland, and you'll get your own official proclamation calling you a lord. Like, I am now Lord Matthew Peterson, and you will refer to me as such in the comment section. And here's my favorite part about what Established Titles is doing. The first 200 people to go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat and use promo code chat, well, not only are they going to give you guys 10% off, which is already an additional huge sale they're having over there, but you get to join me and my Cleveland Browns lot. It is awesome. Browns fans are worldwide. Browns backers are everywhere. Let's take over Scotland, baby. So check it out, EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. I got that link and the promo code in the copy and the description in the comments of today's video. Listen, it makes for an awesome last-minute gift to maybe your brother-in-law or someone you really can't peg, figure out what they want for this holiday season. This is what they want. They want to be a landowner and be a lord in Scotland. And you can put it on your dating profiles, your license, your passports, whatever you want. Moving on here, looking at the upcoming draft arsenal, it appears that this is what the Browns are going to roll with going into the 2023 draft, at least for now, right? Plenty of trades can be made in March and April before the actual draft. But for now, Andrew Barry and company, they are rocking and rolling with these eight picks right here. No additional day two or day three picks added for maybe a Kareem Hunt or a Greedy Williams trade. Another player who was talked a lot about this past week as a potential trade candidate for the Browns. After seeing Martin Emerson shine and have his best game so far, it made it seem like a Greedy Williams trade might be in the cards. I do wonder if Denzel Ward's concussion might be more serious than we're already thinking, and he's missed a handful of weeks at this point already, that maybe they can't afford to move on from Greedy Williams because they don't want to go with, although A.J. Green did have a pick still, they don't want to get that thin at CB here. But Martin Emerson, look at his coverage stats this season. That's a completion percentage of less than 50%, 37 targets, 40 completions, 244 yards and one touchdown. He had a bad game against the Jets and Garrett Wilson. And let's be honest, everyone on this defense did. But he has really come to form the last couple of weeks. And Emerson, just as a rookie, in my eyes, is starting to look like a legit CB2. And when Andrew Barry drafted him, I was critical of it because this team wasn't a corner away from maybe going over the edge in terms of talent on this roster. But right now, Denzel Ward and Martin Emerson and Greg Newsom. Hopefully, when healthy and when actually living up to their potential, can be a top cornerback room in the NFL. Now, pro football focus, love him or hate him, here's how they graded Martin Emerson through eight weeks this season. They have him ranked 17th out of 110. Now, I don't think pro football focus should be something you swear by. It's not the football Bible. But 17, I mean, that says a lot about 23. Overall grade, 76.2. His run defense needs to get better. There's no doubt about that. But his pass coverage is great at 79.3. So who is the better corner? We'll kind of round out this cornerback subject with this question here. Greedy Williams or Martin Emerson? I think it's a pretty close case at this point. I'm voting for 23. But if you want to differ and you want to go with Greedy, that's fine. Let me know in the comment section. The Cleveland Browns, they have their new middle linebacker, right? Their new Mike, if you will, as Taki Taki was a star filling in at that spot on Monday Night Football after losing Anthony Walker and Jacob Phillips. They turned to the BYU Cougar, Taki Taki, who had a career-high 13 tackles on Monday Night Football and his first-ever strip sack. The Browns may have found and finally the third-round pick from BYU, could be living up to what we've all been waiting for him to be more consistent at, right? I don't think anyone's going to sit here and stand or talk to you and say, Taki Taki's been trash up to this game. No, he's just been really good against the run, not so much in pass coverage. Now we're seeing a lot more of it, elements added to his game. The pass rush, getting after the quarterback. He was all over Joe Burrow. And this year, 37 tackles. Three tackles for loss, and now a sack and a forced fumble to go along with it. Listen, this Browns defense still has a lot more improvements to be made. 
and they've looked better the last two weeks. Starting from the Ravens game and now into this Bengals game, which is funny because people like myself said, how is this defense going to fare against Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow when they couldn't handle Mariota or Joe Flacco? Well, they're playing better against better competition. In fact, the numbers back me up here. Look at the Browns' defense. On the left, it's weeks one through seven. And on the right, it's week eight. Huge drop-off in total yards per game from 346 through the first seven weeks to just 229 for Cincinnati's offense. And the best part was that rushing defense that has just been a suey, right? It's just been Swiss cheese. I mean, you get a first down. You get a first down. Everyone gets five yards a touch. Well, Joe Mixon, he stinks, and he can only get 36 yards. And the Browns had five sacks against the Bengals. That reminded me of like the Bears game last year. Finally, this defense is looking like the defense we all thought they would be. So now here's the big question. Are the Browns back? I'm going to whisper it. I don't want to say it too loud. I don't want other people to know. But I think they are. They're back, baby. They're, they're, so, they're so fucking back, it's not even funny. The Browns are 110% back. I'm all the way in. I am prepared to get hurt again, Michael Scott, Matthew Peterson. The Browns are back. The AFC North right now, Browns still have some work to do, but I've got some uh, some optimism, if you will. Look at the standings right now. The Ravens sit at 5-3 and three at the top. The Browns are in third at 3-5. and five, But they still have two more games against the Ravens and the Bengals. So they sort of control their own destiny against Cincinnati, right? You beat the Bengals, even if both teams were to win out, except for that one loss for Cincy, they would be tied. And against the Ravens, you're just asking for one extra fourth quarter collapse. And then the Browns are tied with them if they were to knock off the Ravens and sort of run the table. The Browns got to be close to perfect, and that's a tall order. But I'm looking at the schedule right now, and I'm finding optimism. Coming out of the bye, they go to Miami. That's not going to be easy, sure. But it's coming out of the bye, which makes that a much more manageable game. The Bills, I really can't talk us into winning against the Bills. But hey, any given Sunday, the Bucks. that's a for sure winnable game. You get Watson back starting Week 13 revenge game against the Texans. And then there's that Bengals-Ravens matchups we just talked about. The Saints, I know they just gave it to the Raiders, but the Saints are not going to be a consistent team week in and week out. The Commanders, I told you a while ago, potential trap game. And I'm still afraid of that game, but if they start rattling off wins, they might look like a locomotive that no one can stop. And then Week 18 at Pittsburgh, they're going to shit pump the Steelers, and I can't wait for it. Let's go. Let's go, Browns. Let's go. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Trade deadline has passed. No more trade chatter. Get to focus a little bit extra on the X's and O's and get ready for the Dolphins after the bye. But don't worry, we're not going to slow down our coverage during the bye. Stick it right here. Cleveland Browns report by Chat Sports for the best Browns news and rumors. 